Frequency refers to how many times you train per week and therefore how many times you hit muscle groups per week. For optimal growth. I'm going to give you a few different looks on this, all bold. Some research to suggest that training muscle groups twice per week is highly effective, but also a wider projection that the exact figure of frequency is still fairly unknown within the body of research we have. In addition to that, I'm going to project information to actually suggest that maybe frequency is not overly significant in your thinking in certain contexts. And then lastly, I'm going to apply this concept to everyone's favorite muscle, the glute muscle. And if you don't know where to find the glute muscle, here is a highly complex puzzle for you to solve. Life's a struggle with little beautiful surprises that make you want to carry on to the next little beautiful surprise. And so throughout this video, I will be referencing people who I consider to have expertise in different fields. I consciously do this all across my channel as I want to project information from people who essentially can give you something that I cannot, as ultimately the most important thing is to give you the best quality of information possible so that you may apply it to yourself and be successful in reaching your goals. And let's not forget that YouTube is all about connecting with people. Please give me your ideas, your thoughts, your experiences so I can read through them and develop myself and broaden my mind when it comes to the issue. There are many factors for you to consider, such as your training split, intensity, time availability. Are you training to failure? Your volume, your genetics. Are you own natural or on the old naughty pills? That was a lot of spectrums. What a spectacle. Instantly, I want to state that there is more room for research hmm. and that this topic is not as nailed on as you would think, considering how many opinions there are about it on the internet. However, we have some very up-to-date research, which is an interesting contribution to this topic. For example, Sarich et al. 2019, who looked at training six times per week versus three times per week with volume equated. That is absolutely vital. And they found no benefits to training six times per week. In fact, biceps growth was substantially greater in the three times per week group. Oh yeah. And then we have Zeroni et al. 2019. And this study looked at training muscle groups five times per week compared to once a week. Training five times per week showed greater muscle growth in all the muscles studied compared to the once per week frequency. These muscles included the forearm flexus and the vastus lateralis. Basically, they all turned into Popeye. However, a limitation of both of these studies is that the participant group was all resistance trained men. The technical research term for that is a scientific sausage fest. You could say that considering the issues we have with the current body of research, that people talk about frequency a bit too frequently. Due to the lack of body of research we have, looking at training once, twice, three times per week, for example, it's very hard to give specific numbers to frequency. However, training too frequently, six times per week, really showed no significant benefit compared to the three times a week. And so you can think of there being an upper ceiling of effectiveness for frequency. And so let's quickly venture into the issue of volume. Volume being how much work you are doing. For example, your repetitions and sets. And we have a meta-analysis which can enlighten us on this topic. And essentially there is a dose response relationship to volume and muscle growth. The more volume you use, the greater potential for muscle growth. And this can be related to factors such as metabolic stress and mechanical tension. The repeated repetitions and volume can build up these factors underlying muscle growth. However, this research most certainly states that there is an upper limit to volume similar to frequency, which could be considered junk volume. The exact amount of too much volume is still unknown in the current state of research. In addition, it's important to note you can build muscle using several protocols, a lower volume, higher intensity, aka heavier weight, and also higher volume, lower intensity protocols. However, the researchers state that it is the higher volume protocols which are more, inverted commas, optimal for muscle growth. Based on our findings, it would appear that performance of at least 10 weekly sets per muscle group is necessary to maximize increases in muscle mass. And so it's about finding this balance of net anabolic stimulus. And we can think about protein synthesis, i.e. the building up of proteins and muscle mass. Resistance training has more of an anabolic stimulus than a catabolic stimulus. And so doing it frequently throughout the week several times can benefit us in creating a net anabolic state throughout a week. However, doing it too frequently 
may actually interfere with our recovery throughout the week. And essentially, it's a wave-like structure of anabolism and catabolism where you want to achieve a state of net anabolism for muscle growth. And so you can think of frequency as a literal muscle growth seesaw. Model man makes a triumphant return to the channel. Just don't ask him what he gets up to in his free time. And so now let's add a meta-analysis to our understanding, a meta-analysis being the highest form of evidence-based information we have. Oh, that's exciting. I cannot say that name et al. 2019 have a very recent meta-analysis and what they found was that when volume is equated there was no significant benefit of higher than lower frequency however when volume was not equated higher frequency is beneficial however the difference was insignificant and that it really comes down to your personal preference when programming frequency think of frequency as the knife and volume as the jam so the key is the volume you are performing over the week so with this analysis in hand, we can say that with frequency, you can view it as a method of spreading your volume out over a week. We can come to a sensible projection that training muscle groups twice per week is reasonable. However, that figure is not set in stone and you can deviate as long as your volume is still at that level. It's important to realize that research studies are relatively short term, usually lasting six to 12 weeks. Problem is you can't necessarily extrapolate that results found would continue over time. This is particularly true of variables such as frequency as high training frequencies may ultimately lead to an overtrained state and thus have a negative impact on muscle development. Given such a possibility, it may be prudent to periodize training frequency, varying the number of times a muscle is trained each week in a systematic fashion. Importantly, remember that research reports the average responses, but there are generally large into individual differences in results. Some may respond best to higher frequencies, while others might do better with lower frequencies. Use research to guide your programming, then experiment to see what works best for you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Nuance of the Week, sponsored by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, which takes us into considering other variables such as, are you au natural? Are you on the old naughty pills? If people are on the old juicy vitamins, they can, for example, recover faster and therefore their frequency may increase. And so you can see how there are many factors specific to you, which could influence how often you hit your muscle groups. One of these being your training split. How are you breaking down your training? Are you performing a bro split, for example, where you work chest one day, arms the next day, back the next day, for example? That model does not traditionally lend itself to a higher frequency. Therefore, if you do choose to train bro splits, you will need a good amount of volume in each session. Just so people in this community are aware, and I understand that you watch it with integrity, and thank you so much. What I just said there will now be extrapolated to me supporting bro splits as being superior and the best thing since sliced bread. With all my videos and the way I present information, I don't tell people exactly what to do. It's called analysis. It's called giving information, positives, negatives, discussion around ideas which you may apply to yourself. However, with frequency, an upper lower body split, for example, a push-pull leg split, lend themselves more to frequency as it can be easier to program. You can then repeat those sessions twice a week for a total of six sessions per week. And just to throw in another caveat and a benefit of a higher frequency model, you can develop your competency with movements. If you're training compound lifts, which can be complex to perform several times per week, that can help you build build up competency and improve your exercise execution. And we are all developing our exercise execution as we develop through our fitness journeys. And more specifically, these are known as motor patterns. And if you like motor schema, being your literal exercise memory for how we perform specific movements. Easy, right? Done. Nope. There is way more context and depth to give you. So get on your scuba gear. We're going to Atlantis. It's time to introduce the knuckle duster. Eat that knuckle sandwich. It's Greg Knuckles time. I can confirm that my accent will change during this period of the video. And so this man conducted his own review of the body of research there is, and it's on the website Stronger by Science. And this is simply a masterpiece. Not even Mr. Bean could destroy this masterpiece. And I've referenced it below for you to read it in full. There is no way I can do justice to this incredible work that is on his website. I am going to concise his key points. And this is what he says. If you're currently making progress on a low frequency training program, don't change anything. When you plateau, 
however, consider increasing your training frequency. That may be a highly useful piece of information for you. Plateaus being those pesky walls where essentially you've temporarily stopped hitting your goals and targets. Many lifters anecdotally find that they can tolerate higher frequencies for some exercises or muscle groups, but not others. Higher training frequencies are worth a shot, but keep in mind that your personal responses may not mirror the average response. Quick anabolic note, very similar to what Dr. Schoenfeld said. When you look at research, you may have average responses projected to you. However, you need to apply evidence to yourself. As I mentioned in so many videos, there's a huge aspect of individualization. Did I say that word right? When it comes to all aspects of you programming your fitness and health. If you increase your training frequency, start by distributing your current training volume over more days per week. Don't increase volume until you see how you respond and how well you can recover between sessions. If training purely for hypertrophy with a high frequency, consider alternating between more and less taxing exercises for each muscle group. For example, if you do squats on Monday to train quads, do something lighter like step ups or split squats on Tuesday or Wednesday. I'd primarily recommend higher frequencies when training to bring up weak points or when weekly volume for a given muscle group is low. They're useful in other contexts, but those are the situations where I think they'd give you the largest return on investment. Thank you, Greg. It's been emotional. And last but not least, Dr. Brett Contreras, the glute guy. That's what and so we can take an even further look into frequency and think about specific muscle groups. And Dr. Brett Contreras has a brilliant article related to the glute muscle about frequency. Here's a few nuggets of goodness. Full squats take longer to recover from because they show moderate glute activity, bring the glutes through a big range of motion with an emphasis with on the eccentric phase. Barbell hip work takes less time to recover from because the range of motion is smaller and there's peak tension when the glutes are maximally shortened. And essentially what he's explaining here is that certain exercises have a higher stressor to them. They may be more taxing or stressful on the body compared to different exercises and this can be for different reasons. And as with everything, your adherence, which is easy for me to say, and your consistency is key. And so ultimately it's up to you to program your training for muscle hypertrophy. I'm James Linker. This is Shred Sports Science. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.